Okay, I think we're going to get started. So um, I want to welcome everyone to our curator conversation today uh, from the Wharton Eschrick Museum. I'm Emily Zilber. I'm the Director of Curatorial Affairs and Strategic Partnerships. And I'm so excited for you to join us today to talk with Beth Goodrich. I'll introduce her in just a moment after a little bit of housekeeping. Um, first, we'll hope we hope that you'll join join us for a couple of other upcoming virtual programs. June 22nd at noon, there will be a spotlight talk on Wharton Eshrick's models and model making practice. Uh, June 29th at 3 p.m., we'll have an hour long creatives on Eshrick program with the first prize winner of our current exhibition, Wood and Aspen Golan. So I hope you'll come for that. You can find information for all these programs as well as past recordings of programs on our website. We also hope that you'll come and visit us again now that we're open to the public just uh, in our second week here. So it's very exciting. Um, we have tours of the studio available. We also have our Wood and Juried Woodworking Exhibition 27th Annual uh, online that you can see at any time. And then you can come see the top three prize winning pieces on site as well as works by Roberta Massage, our artist in residence over the past year. So lots going on. Uh, I'm pleased today to welcome Beth Goodrich to the Wharton Eshrick Museum's virtual space. Um, Beth joined the American Craft Council as the librarian there in 2017. She manages the library, archives, digital collections for the organization, and provides research and reference support for the Craft Council staff members and the public. So if any of you have a research project in the craft arena waiting to go, hopefully you'll, you'll, you'll ha have a chance to connect with Beth at some point soon. Um, we're gonna have about 25 to 30 minutes of conversation. I'll ask yourself, you to mute yourselves for that if you haven't already. We'll have about 10 or 15 minutes at the end there for questions and conversation. Um, at that point, you can either put questions in the chat and feel free, free to put questions in the chat throughout. My WEM colleagues, uh, Maria Franey and Julie Sidlin are standing by and they'll be able to answer those for you throughout the talk. Um, or you can unmute yourselves and ask a question at the end. So I wanna start with a big welcome to Beth. Um, who is coming to us directly from the American Craft Council archives. Uh, it's, it's fantastic. We've been seeing so many people in their homes in these programs over the past year. It's pretty wonderful to see you, um, uh, it, you know, in situ at the ACC. Yes. Um, <laughs> so welcome. Well, thank you so much, Emily. I, I'm, it's a tremendous pleasure to be uh, here speaking with you and, and the audience. And um, I'm really honored to have been invited. I'd love for you to, to sort of tell us a little bit about yourself beyond what I've shared in the introduction there. How, what's your background and how did you come oh. to the American Craft Council? Sure, sure. Um, well, I have a bachelor's degree in theater arts, so not craft related, but still within the arts. Um, I had spent some time working both um, on stage and backstage in a, many different facets. Um, for many years um, after college, I worked as a, a dressmaker um, and mainly in the bridal industry. So I was designing and making wedding gowns um, and uh, evening wear. Um, I, uh, I took a, a bit of a break from working when my children were born and um, then started look, looking to re-enter the, the job market around 2010. And I decided after many years of volunteering in the, um, the school libraries where my children attended that uh, librarianship would be a pretty fascinating career. And so I decided to uh, go to library school to get my master's in library science, which I finished in 2013. And uh, from there, I worked uh, in public libraries for quite a bit, and I worked a lot of uh, various special projects with um, different archives and special collections around the Twin Cities. I had done a project with the American Swedish Institute here in Minneapolis. I had worked with the Minnesota Digital Library on uh, some various projects. and. Um, I had also uh, 
met the previous librarian. I had done a little bit of a volunteer uh, project with the previous librarian for the American Craft Council uh, shortly after I finished library school. And I had gotten to know her through the Art Library Society, which I had joined the local chapter of to just kind of network and, and meet people. And uh, she left the position here in 2017. And um, that's when I stepped in as the, the librarian for the craft council. Um, not so much because I had a craft background, which I, I didn't necessarily, but I think because I had a pretty broad understanding of many different facets of doing library, li library work, both reference and working in special collections and working with digital collections uh, of which we have all of those different types of resources here at the ACC. I'd also argue that as a as a dressmaker and a costume designer, you certainly have a craft background. <laughs> well, yes, I, I did have some experience as a maker and and um, having my own business as a maker, mm -hmm. you know, having a studio out of the home. Uh, so that was probably another another facet <laughs> that was of interest to the staff here. So, so I want to I want to give um, ask you to give a, a sort of overview of the American Craft Council and its founding to sort of lay the ground for, for folks on the call who might be unfamiliar with the organization's really important history before we sort of delve into the archives and what they contain. Um, and I'm going to start sure. to share my screen so we can have some, some images here. So if you could talk a little bit about that mission and scope of the organization and also what it does today. Sure, sure. So um, the the American Craft Council was uh, founded by Eileen Osborne Webb, uh, who is a philanthropist um, located in New York, the state of New York. Um, she, in 1939, had first gathered a group of uh, representatives from several different regional craft organizations um, throughout the Northeast of the United States to convene and organize a national group that would manage a retail shop in New York City. Um, the idea is that she wanted to help facilitate a marketplace for um, uh, craftspeople who were located in, in more rural areas and um, intended to locate that uh, retail shop in a more urban area where um, those craftspeople could have a larger audience. Um, so that first uh, convening of, of uh, representatives from the different regional uh, craft organizations um, gathered and started a new organization that was called the Handcraft Cooperative League of America. Um, and, and then shortly after that, in October of 1940, they opened the retail shop um, in New York City, and that was um, opened under the name of America House. Um, then in 1943, um, the Handcraft Cooperative League um, merged with a secondary kind of sister organization that was called the American Handcraft Council um, that was founded by Ann Morgan. And uh, that sister organization had a bit more of an educational focus, uh, but the two organizations had a lot of similarities and um, perhaps were overlapping in some of their efforts. And so the decision was made to pool their resources and their efforts. And then um, they became one organization called the American Craftsmen's Cooperative Council. And that's the organization that really we really point to as being the first iteration of our or, um, organization as the American Craft Council. Um, and then in 1944, uh, as an effort to uh, really dig into our uh, educational mission, the organization founded the uh, School for American Craftsmen. Um, it was first opened at, at Dartmouth College in 1944. And I think um, we have a slide for that, but I'm just showing here. Um, uh, these are more images of oh, America yes. House, which, which you mentioned, the, the sort of retail shop. Um, and here we go with... Uh, Right. With the School yeah. for American Craftsmen. Yes, yes. So I, I believe this image is um, the, the first um, location of, of the School for American Craftsmen at Dartmouth College, I, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and, and then the school is actually is still in existence. It is now running under the, um, the auspices of Rochester Institute of Technology. It's been located there since 1949. 
Um, and then the, the next uh, major undertaking of the Craft Council uh, was to open the Museum of Contemporary Crafts in 1956. Um, here's a, a, a an image of the, um, the first location of the Museum of, of uh, Contemporary Crafts. Uh, it, um, it, the, the Craft Council had operated the museum um, as a, a part of our organization until 1990. In 1990, the museum kind of spun off and became its own entity and um, functioned under its own authority. And the museum is still functioning today as the Museum of Arts and Design in New York City. And uh, let's see, the next, um, uh, ne the next probably the next major venture of the, um, of the council was to open the first uh, craft fair. And that took place um, in Stowe, Vermont in 1966. And it was organized by the Northeast Regional Assembly of the American Craft Council. Um, this was the first iteration of this kind of a, a, an open craft fair. Um, and uh, it, it garnered quite a bit of success. Um, they continued to operate these uh, craft fairs um, year after year and the popularity grew. Um, over time, the craft fairs kind of took over as the retail outlet um, for American crafts. Um, uh, as, as we had talked about, Amer uh, America House as the retail um, operation um, being the beginning of, of our, our organization. Um, it ended up closing in 1972 and I think was eclipsed by the, the, uh, the functioning of these um, craft fairs that um, were gaining in popularity throughout the 70s and really became the major retail outlet for craft artisans. And um, the council has continued to host uh, a variety of craft fairs in, in many different locations throughout the country over the years. Um, at coming to about 2009, it was really becoming pretty apparent that New York City was uh, a much much too expensive a place to, for us to be functioning as a nonprofit organization. So we began looking to some other locations where we could um, we could uh, establish roots for for the organization. And we really uh, placed a lot of focus on those cities where we already had a presence. So for example, those cities throughout the country where we um, already had uh, craft shows or other uh, major events uh, take place. And in 2010, uh, the decision was made to move the council to Minneapolis. And so we have been located here in Minneapolis since 2010. Um, now today we still have um, many of the same uh, functions that we've had throughout our history. We continue to publish a magazine. Um, it started out as Craft Horizons, which was at at its very beginning was the, um, the kind of newsletter for those artists that were, um, that were exhibiting at America House and then um, kind of morphed into a true magazine format. Um, and now it is published under the title American Craft and this is the 80th anniversary of uh, our publishing this magazine. Um, we do also continue to host um, craft fairs throughout uh, the, the country. Um, most recently, the past two years, our craft shows have been online, of course, um, but we do anticipate in 2022 returning to in-person um, craft shows. Um, and we may continue to do some of the online uh, shows as well. Um, we've really had a lot of good response from the online shows that we have done in the past couple of years. Um, of and course I hope that you'll, I hope that you'll have some, some in-person visitors to, to this beautiful library space here. To, oh, yes, <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes. And that, that was the next thing I was going to point out was, of course, we are still um, operating this research library, which was moved from New York City to Minneapolis, and, and we still maintain the collection here. And then we do also continue to do um, 
programming as we can. Um, of course, our programming was quite limited the past couple of years, but we do, do um, have plans to continue a programming that really supports the diversity of, of uh, the craft community and, um, and really uh, shine a light on the significance the craft has in our uh, contemporary culture. That's fantastic. Um, I'd love to, I'd love for you to like take us back a little bit and talk about the development of the library and the archives at, at the American Craft Council. Give us a, a picture of how it started and, sure. and the kind of materials and resources that are there. Sure, sure. Well, we've always had um, in the, the offices of the, of the organization, we have always had some resource materials for members to access. Um, but I think the the library itself um, really had a, its its firm establishment with the opening of the museum. That was the first time that we had a dedicated space for the library. So I can point to 1956 as being the um, the beginning of the physical library. Um, our, our library collection focuses on contemporary American craft, uh, naturally. Uh, primarily post-World War II to the present day. So that really reflects, um, you know, essentially the, the timeline of our organization. Um, we have all, we have uh, resources that focus on all different types of craft media. And we have uh, the whole gamut of types of resources from very technical manuals to uh, publications uh, focused toward the hobbyist or, or beginning learner in a, in a um, in a craft activity. Um, we also do bleed into some, some other kind of adjacent areas such as um, architecture, design, fashion, that kind of thing. But we do uh, primarily focus on the craft media. Um, in, in addition to our, our book collections, we have a significant collection of ex exhibition catalogs from uh, exhibitions throughout the country and the world, um, again, focused on the different craft media. Uh, we have about 100 uh, current publications of um, uh, periodicals that are also focused in the craft media. Uh, we have a very significant holding of artist files, um, nearly 4,000 artist files that contain all kinds of ephemera, uh, resumes, um, images of work, um, press releases, press clippings, um, exhibition catalogs. Um, and this is one correct for, for Jack Leonard Larson. These sure. are some materials from his artist file. Right, here. exactly, exactly. Yeah. These are a, 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 is a, an example of some of the materials that we would find in Jack Lenore Larson's file. He has a quite a robust file. He is one of our, um, uh, our gold medalists, um, one of our award winners, and so we ha and had a very uh, long and involved history with the the craft council. So we have quite a robust file for him. Um, so and then I've I've mentioned the periodical collection. Well, we also do, of course, have the archives. We have um, four major archival collections. Of course, we have the institutional um, archives for the craft council. We have the archives of the Museum of Contemporary Crafts um, up until 1990. So um, it's kind of interesting, any uh, curators or staff from the Museum of Arts and Design, if they're looking to uh, dive into some of the materials from their own history, quite often they're calling me because we have the materials here. <laughs> um, and uh, let's see, on top of that, we also do have the archives for the World Crafts Council. So um, Eileen Osborne Webb, who was our founder, um, was also instrumental in the founding of the World Craft Council. And we do have the archives uh, for that organization as well. And then our fourth major collection is the, the Craft Students League of New York, which was uh, uh, an organization of craft students, of course, um, and, and uh, it covered, that covers a, a number of decades. I believe they were founded in the 20s and were active up until the early 2000s. And mm -hmm. we have um, many ma materials from student exhibitions, all, all different kinds of materials from that collection. Um, and then we do have some other smaller collections of, um, of various artists or other craft organizations that have 
um, kind of made their way into our collections as well. And then of course you have digital collections oh, as yes. well that folks can can access and re, uh, you know use. Uh, they don't have to just come to Minneapolis to work with you. That's right, absolutely. Um, we do have a quite a robust digital collection and here you can see um, what's essentially the landing page for our digital collections. Um, it, it's really just a, a small fraction of the archival materials that we have in our physical collection. But we have pulled out some of the most um, important materials and have um, over the years had um, grant funding to do digitization and get uh, those materials into this digital platform so they'd be freely accessible um, to anyone, anywhere, anytime. Um, and this is a very heavily used resource um, and has been particularly important, of course, in these, these past couple of years when people are unable to come and, and visit the library. Um, so you'll see here that we have um, exhibition materials from the museum. We also have 50 years of our magazine uh, fully digitized from 1941 till 1990. Um, so that's um, that's probably an, 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 a, a priority for me is to uh, at some point fill that gap to um, uh, fill out the rest of the uh, the digitization of the magazine to get some more recent issues uh, published there. Mm, that's fantastic. And, and certainly the, the, the digital archives is what brought us together to talk about <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, this, this talk. Um, you know, I ha it's, it's been wonderful to use the archives here. And specifically in thinking about um, Eshrick, you know, the, the American Craft Council touched Wharton Eshrick's life and career at so many different points. And so I'd love to hear a little bit more, you know, about about, and I think we can we can through Eshrick we can talk about the diversity of resources that you have. Sure. You know, where Eshrick can be found in in the collection? What documentation do you have that exists of these sort of moments of connection between the ACC and Eshrick? And and as we're we're sort of talking about some of these big moments, I'll also um, uh, pepper in some things from from our archives that work in tandem. <laughs> Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. It's always fascinating to see how um, collections in, in very, dis, di, uh, very diverse um, locations can have really quite close relationships to each other. Mm -hmm. So um, really, uh, when you're doing research within archives, it's absolutely not a one stop shop, you're going to find materials all over the place. So um, yeah, I think uh, with regard to Escherich, he can be found throughout our collections, really. Um, we have uh, quite a number of books uh, about um, Escherich in our, in our book collection, um, and also many exhibition catalogs um, with, uh, with, which that he, with which he was um, involved. Um, you know, and, and uh, something that occurred to me as I was doing some reading about uh, about Escherich and and just how he touched the American Craft Council, I thought it was interesting that he was um, involved with the um, 1939 World's Fair in New York City, which was just about the time that Mrs. Webb was um, putting together this her handcraft cooperative league. Mm -hmm. And it just made me wonder if at some point they may have come into contact um, around the World's Fair. It, um, I, of course, I can find no, um, no evidence of that, but it, it just made me wonder. Uh, That's uh, a good project for, yeah. for us or for anyone <laughs> on the call. <laughs> right, right. Um, so I think um, certainly, uh, one place where we can find him in our archives is uh, with regard to our first um, national conference that was located, uh, organized in, in Asilomar, California. Mm -hmm. And um, Eshrick was, uh, he was, uh, I guess he was a, named as an advisor to a, 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 a panel of, of wood workers. Um, they had uh, various panels um, focused on the different media and and he was the advisor to the wood panelists. So you see him here uh, pictured in the the published proceedings from the um, from the conference. Um, so that's probably one of the first area uh, one of the first 
times, uh, in a, if you're looking at a timeline, um, that he is very visible within our collections. Um, and I think you have the proceedings from Asilomar digitized right. and available on your website. I'm showing here and, and you can tell that it's from, from, from the Escherich collection when there's this like salmon colored background. I was trying to make a visual <laughs> <laughs> distinction. Um, we have Escherich's copy of the issue of Craft Horizons that focused on Asilomar, photographs right. of, of Escherich there, mm -hmm. um, his copy of the brochure from the program, from, from visiting uh, his letter from Eileen Osborne Webb about attending, um, his correspondence about, uh, you know, getting to the conference, these, these very <laughs> um, <laughs> mundane things. I got to San Francisco, I left for New York. <laughs> yes. All the logistics, yes. So we yeah. have all, all of the logistics. Um, uh, and then we also, a little too ahead, um, do you have some uh, some responses that he wrote to to his time at Asilomar? So we'll be sharing those with with folks. Uh, uh, and we have a, a blog post on our website about Estrick's experience at oh, Asilomar. Sure. If anyone wants to take a look. Sure. Right. Yes. And and uh, his his correspondence is always uh, fun to read. You know, he's yes. he's quite a quite a lively writer. Yes. I'm just I'm just looking here in this letter. The 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 line in here that I thought was so wonderful was I enjoyed myself and was delighted you asked me to join the the conference. I sometimes wonder if I earned my salt in the meetings. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I feel sure something was accomplished in those bull sessions. So. Right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that, that, yes. Uh, he does does have a certain turn of phrase. Yes, that's that's true. Um, so yeah, I think shortly following the Asilomar conference, um, he uh, Escherich was invited to um, act as a juror for the um, the Young Americans 1958 uh, exhibition, and uh, so here we have um, an image of the um, small catalog brochure from the exhibition and um, an image of the installation at the Museum of Contemporary Crafts. Um, and you can see his name listed right there on front. So he was a juror along with, um, you know, some other very big names in, in the craft community, Daniel Rhodes, Dorothy Liebes, Margaret Craver, um, and Bartlett Hayes. It's, um, yeah, it's a uh, quite an impressive jur jurying panel there. So when I saw that and I was thinking, um, looking for through our materials, trying to think about what we could supplement, I, I found uh, this uh, response to, so his handwritten response and then the typed version um, about serving on the, the jury for young Americans here, um, where he says, thank you for inviting me to serve on the jury. Personally, I just like juries, whether I'm being judged or the judge. <laughs> but friends said I should serve to help the layman get better things. So Tom, I'm with you. I'll do it. <laughs> oh, so I love that. Expressing his... Uh, <laughs> I guess his, if I have to, I will. <laughs> you know, I guess if I have to jury this very important yes. exhibition, I'll, yes. I'll sign on. <laughs> yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> And then um, I think I think the the next sort of point of contact we had was was about the the 1958 World's Fair in Brussels. Right, right, yeah. So um, I we had um, I don't know, not a we didn't have a whole lot. It certainly didn't find any um, correspondence um, in our collection regarding um, from him regarding this um, this venture, but um, we there was some pretty good documentation regarding the, the, the pieces that he had mm -hmm. submitted for this ex exhibition. Um, so uh, here I have a couple of images of uh, some of the pieces. There's the music stand and the, um, the wooden bowl. I think what, at one point I, somewhere I saw it referred to as an apple bowl. So very specific. Um, and so I have that here, actually, in the letter that we have. Oh, okay. <laughs> a short copy of the letter from, from David Campbell. Um, at the ACC, who who mentions it as apple bowl from friend, so yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and addresses Eshrick's disappointment at not being able to show a lot of bigger things at the right, fair. right. Yes, they had to encourage him to select smaller items to submit for that. Yeah, 
So one of the things I, I love here, because it shows this kind of ongoing relationship between the council and Eshrick is um, where David mentions, I was talking to Mr. Tibbs about the one man show that we are to have here next year, and we feel it will be a knockout. So yes. this is in anticipation of um, uh, the, the exhibition that Eshrick had in 1958 at the Museum of Contemporary Crafts. Right, right. So that followed shortly after. And um, it, it's interesting because this was the first solo show that took place at the Museum of Contemporary Crafts. Um, I had tried to find any um, explanation for how or why, you know, he, uh, Wharton Asherick was chosen as, as, uh, as a solo show over others or, um, you know, what prompted them uh, the museum staff to decide that we need to do a solo show and this is the one we need to do. I, I couldn't find any kind of documentation about that. But, um, you know, again, another question to ponder over. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I love that you've shared all of these wonderful um, installation images with me, yes. which I, I believe are also available on the, uh, through the digital archives. Mm -hmm. um, so people can really get a sense of, of not just what was included in the exhibition, but also the exhibition design. And, right, right. Um, you know, I look at these and, and love seeing all of the, the textiles and the plants and the ways that they've chosen to, to, to display things here. Right. Yeah. Just the, the juxtaposition of different items and, um, yeah, and the marvelous staircase. Um, yeah. Yes, it's wonderful I, to see items that we know <laughs> right. are in the studio and part of our collection in this in this context here. Right, right, yeah, and and something I did find too is that um, you can, uh, they, of course, there was the whole um, list of of uh, people who had loaned items for this particular um, exhibition, and and just looking through that list, you know, I could find some some artist names that I recognize, such as June Groff or um, Franz and Marguerite. Uh, Wildenhain, who had loaned items for this particular exhibition. So I found that fascinating. It's it's great and it tracks with, you know, well, so I wanted to show here some of these <laughs> documents that we have correspondence re related to the show. So um, writing to Robert Lauer, the curator, um, uh, dear Bob, the truck has gone with all the load of trash. Good luck to you with the <laughs> arranging of it. God be with you. So <laughs> again, that, that sort of estric humor. And then, um, yeah. Uh, you know, even uh, the other letter here where he's back and forth with, with Bob talking about um, an insurance question, and he also talks about, we get this marker of time in the studio where he's gotten rid of the earth floor and created the sculpture well that we have here. So even yeah. in the correspondence about this, this show, we get some, some moments that are important to, to us at the museum. Um, I also was so interested that you saw the the loan from the Wildenhains because we have a lot of material in our archives of um, correspondence between uh, oh. the Wildenhains and Eshrick, um, whether it's holiday cards, um, uh, trying to bring some, some, some things up to shop one in Rochester, so connected to the school there to, to sell or personal correspondence. Sure, sure, yeah. Uh, so, um, in addition to um, the the solo show on Morton Escherich, you know, of course, he was involved in a, a number of other um, exhibitions. Uh, and here are some uh, covers of various catalogs from the different um, exhibitions um, that in, in which he, he took place. Um, uh, I think the the very first. Um, exhibition that I saw his name associated with was Designer Craftsman 1953, which was a mm -hmm. traveling exhibition. So that was even before the museum opened. Um, but then you can see others here, Furniture by Craftsman, which was 1957, um, the 1960 um, gold medal exhibition of building arts, visual communications in the crafts, um, the American Craftsman, which that was 1964, the collector object environment was 1965. Um, and then I just love these two yeah. for the graphic design. I mean, that's yes. also. <laughs> yes, I think this we're, right here, we're getting into a period in the late 60s and early and through the 70s when um, I, I am very impressed by our exhibition catalog covers that the 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 graphic design that was employed um, is just phenomenal. Um, 
but uh, but this yeah this ex ex acquisitions exhibition um, was of course featuring new um, acquisitions by the museum and um, included in that I believe was one of the um, library step stools that mm -hmm. that he's created um, that is now in the uh, in the collection at the Museum of Arts and Design. Um, the door was 1968 um, and then of I believe the last exhibition um, that Wharton Escherich was involved with um, was, uh, of course, the Objects USA exhibition mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. um, opened at the Smithsonian in 1969 and didn't, didn't arrive at the Museum of Contemporary Crafts until 1972 because it traveled, traveled the world, really. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, he he was uh, quite involved um, and very very much visible in the museum exhibitions. Mm. Um, and then in, in addition to that, of course, uh, there are articles from Craft Horizons magazine, which I believe you've shared some of the uh, articles. Um, there was a in particular, I'm thinking of the. Um, the article from 1966 where um, he, there was an interview between Sam Maloof, Donald McKinley, and Warren mm -hmm. Escherich, and that was featured in the in the um, Craft Horizons in 1966. There's also a, a lovely tribute to Wharton Escherich that was um, written by Sam, Sam Maloof and Wendell Castle in 1970 after mm. um, Wharton Escherich passed away. So there are some two um, uh, wonderful articles about him, and you can find those um, in our digital collections if you look into the Craft Horizons um, digitized um, issues. Yeah, which is fantastic for folks at home who want to dig a little bit more sure. into that. <laughs> sure, yeah. Um, so, and then we also do, of course, have an artist file for Wharton Escherich, and there are, you know, a variety of different materials, uh, many, many um, different uh, photographs and slide images of, uh, of many of his works. Um, and um, something interesting I found here, too, was um, an application that uh, we would send out to various um, artists as we were opening up a, an, a, an artist file for the artist. Uh, we would have them fill out this questionnaire and this would be used for, um, you know, well, it says here research service craftsman questionnaire. So it would, it could be used by staff. It could, um, you know, potentially be used by researchers. And as we are using them, we, using those um, documents now. Um, so it, he was quite spare in how he filled out this questionnaire, as you can see. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it was it was interesting to find that um, in his artist file. So, and I and then I know you know one of the things that that I um, is so interesting about Eshrick for me is this this range of people that he had connections to, whether it is the Wilbon Haynes, like you mentioned, or June Groff, or um, other artists. Uh, who were working and doing really innovative things at the same time. And I know um, you have some of that correspondence as well. You have a lot of materials related to folks who, who played a major role in Eshrick's life in the sure. archives there. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Um, so I think uh, one of the, um, the artists that I know that, uh, and Emily, you had mentioned to me that there was a, uh, quite an association with Ruth Reeves and, mm -hmm. and Wharton Escherich. And so I did some digging to see you know, how she had been affiliated with the American Craft Council. And it turns out that she had written several articles for Craft Horizons. And so here are some pages from um, some of our issues of Craft Horizons and the articles that she had written for us. Um, she also, interestingly, was um, a juror for the Young Americans 1950 and 1953, which was um, the first uh, exhibition in, that uh, Wharton Escherich exhibited um, at the Museum of Contemporary Crafts with mm. the, um, the Young, uh, Young Americans 1953 um, exhibition. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That, I'm, I'm misspeaking. That was designer craftsmen. So, um, but, um, so Ruth Reeves had... Um, had um, 
uh, function as a juror for some of our exhibitions. Um, and she was also a, an award winner at the Designer Craftsman 1953. That was, um, mm, I'm, okay. I'm misreading my <laughs> notes here. It's, there's just so much, uh, so much information to remember. So. Which is wonderful. And it, and, and I hope folks will, will, who are intrigued by, by things will, will follow up on it. Ruth, Ruth sure. Reeves, um, we have work by her in our collection um, and, and work that she's done depicting the Escher family. So there was a, there was a friendship there. So that's wonderful sure. to, to see yeah. that. Right. Um, uh, let's see, I think um, June Groff, is that? A, yes, June Groff, that's, we're on to June Groff now. So she was another um, person that had quite an affiliation with um, Wharton Escherich. And here you can see that she was part of the um, Fabrics International exhibition. And um, so here's a, an image of the, the, um, the cover from that, uh, that exhibition catalog. Uh, and then I'm showing, I'm just showing on the other, on the other screen here, um, some correspondence back and forth between June Groff and Ashrick. And then if you come to visit the studio, you'll see her fabrics on um, a variety, in a variety of places in the studio, including these wonderful pillows that are in yeah, Ashrick's bedroom. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. Um, and then of course, you know, there was a wonderful friendship between um, Morton Escherich and Henry Varnum Poor. And um, again, here you can see, um, Henry had written several articles for Craft Horizons. Um, you know, I can see three titles here. Uh, we have also in our collections um, several books, both by and about Henry Varnum Poor. Uh, we have a, an artist file uh, for him that includes uh, images of his work, um, clippings, and exhibition catalogs. Um, and um, and Henry Varnum Poor was also a part of the um, Variations in Media exhibition that mm. took place at the MCC, at the Museum of Contemporary Crafts. And of course, he was also part of Objects USA. So um, those were a couple of um, museum exhibitions that he was involved with. And uh, something that I did not know was that he was a trustee of the ACC for, mm -hmm. um, for a number of years, uh, right at the end of the 1950s. So that was, that was something new for me um, that I just found out when I was doing this research for well, today. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Poor and Eshrick were close. We have a, 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 a spotlight program that we recorded on that relationship that's available on our website. But I also think you can see it. Um, I love this this letter from Henry Varnum Poor to Eshrick um, uh, giving his response to the show at the Museum of Contemporary Crafts in 1958, right? So mm -hmm. um, I went in yesterday to see your show and it's very fine. And I'm very glad those guys have done it and done a very nice catalog too. <laughs> to wander through it was a great pleasure from the things themselves and from nostalgic memories. Um, so you certainly beat all the furniture boys to it by about 20 years. And that's only from the point of view of design, from the point of view of beautiful personal sculptural quality, you're alone. <laughs> so, so really this wonderful close relationship and then um, to be able to fill that out with, with the great materials that you have in, yeah. in the library. Oh, that, that leather letter is a treasure. That is just <laughs> wonderful to see. Um, you know, I, I want to, ask how do people who think that they might want to work with the ACC library with the cat with the collection there get connected with you how what what's the process of of deciding you want to come and, and spend some time with the materials sure. you have sure absolutely well um uh, you know unfortunately right now we are not open to the public quite yet um i'm hoping that that is going to change in the near future we're looking at uh, potentially a, a mid-summer opening by appointment to on-site visits um but um that's not quite the case yet that being said there is still uh, a great deal of our collection that you can access online if you go to our our website you can um, find the library listed in the in the banner across the top of, on our landing page and from there you can access our our book catalog you um, can access the finding aids for our archives and um, those finding aids are essentially kind of a, 
uh, inventories and descriptions of the kinds of materials that you will find in a, a library in an archival collection. Um, and then you can also, of course, access our digital collection. And um, as I said, uh, even though it's a small fraction of our archival holdings um, represented in the digital collection, there's still um, a, a, a wealth of material there that you can access, um, freely access. Um, you don't need to be a member. There's no paywall. It's, it's free and open 24 hours a day. So there's quite a lot that you can access um, at any time. Of course, if you have questions about any of the materials in our collection or have need assistance with um, uh, finding information, you can always contact me. Um, I do most of my reference work, in fact, by email, uh, by phone, um, or even by chat. I have a, a chat widget where I can do reference work um, in real time on, on, wow. the, on the website. So that's fantastic. Um, and we'll make sure that, that your contact information um, is available to folks in the follow up email for this for this program. Absolutely. So. Yes. Um, yeah. If you have any questions um, about anything craft related, um, absolutely feel free to uh, reach out to me and I'll see if I can help you out. Before, before I want to, I, I want to ask you about, um, you know, what's, what you're interested in learning more and what you're interested in adding to the archives. But before I do that, I realized I stopped reading that quote too soon because the line there, maybe that pretentious, stupid, but powerful museum next door will wake up soon. And of course he's referring to MoMA, um, is too good to, <laughs> to, to let go. Yeah, that, that's a wonderful line. Yeah. I, <laughs> it, it, yeah. Conversation. Yeah, I'd love to hear a little more just um, before we close and, and so we have some time to ask questions, just a sure. little bit about, um, you know, who you're hoping to dig into and, and add to the collection in in the, the coming months and years. Oh, sure. Um, well, it's, um, you know, at one point you had asked me, you know, what, what you know, my, my favorite um, piece in our collection would be, which is like, kind of like asking, you know, who's your favorite child? It's unfair, <laughs> fundamentally, right. yes, I realize. Yes, yes. <laughs> but I do have to say that I I, I love our copy of Sock oh, Products. <laughs> I love, love to take it out every once in a while and flip through, yeah. But, uh, but as far as um, what I would like to um, add to our collection um, or, or highlight or elevate in our collection is that, um, you know, we, we do have a lot of information, particularly with our artist files, on, um, on many individual artists. And um, you know, I, I, historically, of course, our our organization, like many other organizations, has has been largely um, largely white. <laughs> so, but there are um, artists of a variety of backgrounds and, and cultures that are in a, a part of our, um, our archive and are a part of our artist files. And, and, um, and there were, were um, important artists, but I don't feel like we have um, given enough time or space to to their voices and their work. So I'm really looking forward to um, trying to um, call out some of these artists. Um, I th I'm thinking of artists like um, Charles Laloma, who was part of the, um, and uh, and his wife, Otelli uh, Laloma. Who, who are both pictured, um, pictured yes, here. Yes, both pictured slide. here. Yeah. And Charles Laloma was part of that, you know, um, uh, seminal uh, exhibition objects USA. Um, I would I would like to learn more about them so that I could kind of tell their story more. Um, uh, something I also that I learned very recently was uh, uh, Lloyd Kiva New was one of our honorary fellows and a member of the Cherokee Nation and um, a designer, um, a fashion designer and a designer in many different respects. And he was um, an artist I really didn't know much about. Again, I would like to learn more about him and his story and, and be able to uh, uh, speak, speak more about what his work was and how he was involved with our organization. And glass artist um, James Tanner, who's one of our fellows. Um, and, you know, he, he, uh, 
we have an awards program called a College of Fellows in which we recognize artists who have made a significant contribution over the years uh, to their field. And James Tanner was was recognized as one of our fellows. And um, but I don't think that he is given as much uh, um, as much attention as some of our other uh, fellow artists. So um, again, I'm, I'm just looking forward to learning more about these artists and being able to um, elevate their stories a little bit more in, in my curation and, uh, um, and, and programming that I, that I um, organize around the library and the collections. Well, I will be there for one. <laughs> okay, <laughs> to wonderful. Yeah. To attend that programming. And I'm sure um, other folks that are part of the program today will be as well. Um, thank you so much, Beth, for taking us on this really oh. rich sort of uh, dive into the, the collections here. I, we have a couple of time for time, we have a little time for questions. If folks want to ask, you can either put them in the chat or feel free to unmute yourself and um, ask a question directly. Well, and while we're paused, Emily, I want to thank you again for inviting me. Of course, I always love to talk about the library. It's one of my favorite things to talk about. So <laughs> I, I appreciate uh, you giving me the platform and, and the time and the space to do this. Well, I have benefited um, immensely from <laughs> the resources that you have. So um it's 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 a pleasure and i hope other folks have the same opportunity sure. uh, we have jean oh hi jean <laughs> mclaughlin oh. uh is saying jim tanner lives near minneapolis and would be a fun research visit for you beth he's yes. come to minneapolis to meet me when i've come to acc meetings oh yes yes i and I, again i have to be reminded that he's you know he taught for many years at man in mankato which is just down the road so um yeah absolutely i i um would love to try to connect with him and and uh learn more about uh his his time uh with and in involvement with the acc yeah we have a question from from chris taylor hi chris asking um what are the biggest challenges and opportunities for the library going forward oh goodness um, <laughs> Well, I, I, you know, I have to say, uh, over the past couple of years, when everything has been closed down, I have, I have to say, I'm very grateful that we already had um, as much of an online presence as as we did, and you know, I credit our previous librarian for getting the the digital collections um, organized and up and running. Um, and so that made my life so much easier in trying to work with um, with, with uh, patrons remotely. Um, really, the majority of the patrons I have been working with um, has always been remotely because I'm working with patrons from all over the world. Um, but uh, uh, it was it was very sad to have to close the library and not invite people in and um, I'm really looking forward to being able to do that in the next year. Um, you know, I think, as with any cultural institution. Um, funding and staffing is always a challenge um, be, because uh, having some a resource such as the digital collection uh, available is is very expensive it, it takes. Um, it takes a lot of time and staffing to digitize that material um, and then describe it and get it put out, uh, publish it out to where pe people can access it. Um, there's always uh, much more work than any one person can do. <laughs> and, um, and I am a, a solo librarian, so I'm kind of doing all the things. Uh, but um, I, I, I am grateful to have uh, associations with, um, for example, the, uh, the local library school that I can um, have students come in and have a practical on-site learning experience. Um, and that can help me out with um, completing certain projects that I might not be able to get to. And um, I, I enjoy having that opportunity to kind of um, help launch the next generation of of librarians so um Which i don't know if i answered your question but 
<laughs> I have to say that seems really fitting with um, with the the start of the ACC and its foundation, right? And mm -hmm. and um, thinking about the next generation and how sure. to continue on the legacy of scholars and um, and artists who uh, find inspiration in the history of their field. It's it's fantastic work that I'm so glad you're right. facilitating. Yeah. Nancy had maybe our last question today. Um, Beth, have you ever visited the Escher Museum? And there's an open yeah. invitation. <laughs> I have to say, I have not, but um, you know, if I am in the area of Pennsylvania, absolutely, that is going to be at the top of my list to, uh, to come and visit. Um, I, you know, I've, I've poured over the pictures of the facility and, of course, all the, the work and, you know, images of the inside of the studio and so forth, and I would love to see it in the flesh, so to speak, yes. Um, well, we'd love to have you here. And <laughs> um, I, I just... Oh, we have one last question from Jean. Oh, sure. Let's see if we can squeeze it in. Your new newsletter is delightful. Can you talk about how people can access this information and how you're getting the word out about the library's holdings? Oh, and sure. apropos to the funding needs, there will be a launching soon of an a of an ACC Friends of the Library. Fantastic. Yes. Yes, yes. Thank you, Jean, one of, one of our trustees. Yeah, she's very helpful. Um, um, yeah, so I am, have been uh, putting together a quarterly newsletter uh, for the library specifically. So I try to highlight different parts of our, um, our collections that people might not be aware of. I try to highlight new acquisitions that we have. Um, projects that we're working on and you can access all of the back issues and sign up for future issues uh, right on our website. So if you go to um, the website craftcouncil.org and find the library's uh, page, you'll see a, a drop down menu for newsletter and that's where you can access the back issues and then sign up to receive the um, the future issues right in your uh, email box. Um, and we'll put yeah. a link to that in the follow-up email okay. for the event. So folks Great. can just click and get right there. We'll, make, we'll make it easy for everyone here to sign up. Yes, yes, wonderful. Yes, I would um, love to have everyone who is interested in, in what we're doing um, sign up for that newsletter and, um, and feel free to contact me with any questions about it. And then yes, also uh, regarding the Friends of Library of the ACC Library Group, we are in the in the process of organizing that, and uh, we will certainly put out um, an announcement um, when that is launched uh, in in the near future. So. That's fabulous. Well, thank you, Beth, for for spending this time with us today. Um, it Folks. was my pleasure, Emily. <laughs> <laughs> when we when we when we end an event here, um, we usually ask folks to maybe unmute themselves if they feel like it. Uh, uh, we'd love to see your smiling faces and and say goodbye as you as you head off into the rest of your day. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank oh, you. Well done. Thank you. Thank you all for Thank attending. <laughs>